Hi. So I am Maggie Marr. I am the USA Today bestselling author of over 20 books. I am also the author of Books to Film and TV, What Every Author Needs to Know. I am the founder of Maggie Marr Legal PC. We are a law firm dedicated to intellectual property and the needs of creative individuals. Legal solutions for creative people. So today I want to speak to you a little bit about what are brand assets for authors. So a brand asset is something that is important to you as a business person or an entrepreneur. So there are specific brand assets to authors that I think are really important. A brand asset can be your copyright. That's one brand asset. Another brand asset can be your pin name. Another brand asset can be your logo if you have one. And then also a brand asset can be your series name. So that's four that I'm going to talk about today. So uh, your copyrights, your pin name, your series name, and your logo. These are all brand assets and they have value in and above your individual titles, right? So let's talk about, we all know that our copyrights are a brand asset and they're really important. And your copyright vests immediately upon the time that you actually put your thoughts onto paper, you have the copyright. I also have done a couple of, vi couple of videos about why you would want to file for copyright with the US Copyright Office and we'll link to those below. One of, there are three primary reasons why you would file for copyright. One of them is it shifts the burden of proof to the infringer uh, if you run into a situation where your copyright is being infringed upon. The second one is, is that it gives you or provides you statutory, statutory damages if you get into a situation where you have to litigate it. And then finally, it, that also provides for you recouping attorney's fees if you have filed for copyright. So I believe that it's really important as an author who has, uh, who is an entrepreneur and also a business owner that you file for copyright for your books. It's not a difficult process. It's not expensive. You can do it at the U.S. Copyright website. Uh, the website can feel a little bit onerous or challenging the first couple of times you do it, but you're a writer. You're the smartest person in the room. You can absolutely file for copyright online. So get that done so that you have proof of your copyright. Um, so another brand asset that can be incredibly important is a series name. I did a video recently that talked about how you cannot trademark an individual title, but what you can trademark is a series name. Here's an example. I have some clients who have a tremendous, ro tremendously robust business, six figures, seven figures, and most of that comes from one specific series. So at that point, I would say to them, if they haven't done it already, it's time to trademark your series name. The reason being is that that series name is known to your readership. It is known to the marketplace. It has a value that exceeds just the individual books. That series name has a tremendous value. You don't want someone else to suddenly start publishing under that series name because that could be confusing to your readers. It could confuse the marketplace. And then what if what if that author does a really bad job on that book series and the readers are confused and they're like, wait, why is this series suddenly bad? And that diminishes the value of your series because they think that they have read something that is in the same series as the one that you own and that one was not so great. And so they stopped buying your series based on the bad experience that they had with the other series that has the same series name. So I would say that what you wanna do is you wanna trademark your series name. This leads me to another point that I'll do in another video, but if you're considering doing a new series, you might wanna run a trademark search to see if that series name is, av is available. This is something that businesses do all the time. They run brand searches before they title or name a new brand or a, a new um, a new line, they want to make sure that that's available. That name is available before they spend a lot of time, money, resources, and energy in that. Because what if somebody's already trademarked it? So that's a good that's a good idea for authors as well to do a quick search to make sure that a new series name is available to you, so that if when it becomes incredibly successful, you can trademark it. So copyrights, uh, series name, pin name. Um, authors who write under a pin name, 
they can trademark that PIN name. And, and in fact, it can become incredibly important to trademark that PIN name because that PIN name has value. Um, again, it's very similar to what we were just discussing about a series name. You don't want someone else to start using your PIN name right? And then it confuses readers and it becomes confusing in the marketplace. What if somebody uses your pin name, you don't have the trademark on it, and they write really horrible books or books that your readership wouldn't enjoy and don't like, and your readership becomes confused. They think that you wrote those books and they read one of these horrible books or a book that is an outlier to them. And suddenly they stop buying your books because they think those books were your books. Trademark your pin name. Right, Because then if somebody else starts to utilize that PIN name, what you can do is you can send them a cease and desist because you have the trademark for that PIN name. Um, the other thing is, is that it can become incredibly valuable if you decide that you're going to use your PIN name as kind of a brand and you want to hire other writers to write under that PIN name. Also, it can become in very valuable to your heirs with regards to estate planning because they may decide to continue on with that pin name and have other people write under that pin name and that's a revenue stream that they can capitalize moving for capitalize on moving forward nancy drew is a perfect example that's a pin name um, that is trademarked um, so let's see we talked about copyrights book series pin name logos logos. So a lot of authors have a logo and it can be dedicated basically to, to them as an author or it might be dedicated to a specific book series. And that logo allows for readers to know what book series they're getting into before they even um, read the title. We all know that logos have a tremendous impact. I mean, just think of the Nike swoosh, think of the Starbucks mermaid, think of the Apple Apple, we know those logos and we know what they mean and we know what that what they're selling when we see that logo. So an author logo can become incredibly valuable because what it does is it sends messaging to your readers, i.e. your market, that this is your brand and what they can expect when they pick up this book. So if you decide that you want to use a logo, then trademark that logo so that it's yours. Um, so these are incredibly valuable brand assets and they become your brand assets as an author. And you want to take care of them because those brand assets, that value can continue to grow and you can pass those assets on to your heirs. Uh, and you can also utilize them for the rest of your, the rest of the time that you're writing. All right. So thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful. If um, if you did find it helpful, be really excited if you would like the video, please, please like it. And then also if you would please subscribe to my channel. Um, I will continue to provide videos like this with regards to intellectual property, creativity, books to film, trademark, copyright, anything that has to do with intellectual property. All right. So thank you so much for listening to me today. And I hope you have a great day.